Every job starts with a thorough inspection in order to ascertain the current condition of the roof. Uh, well, many of the things that we look at are going to be the HVAC equipment. Uh, in this particular location we had uh, some regular galvanized uh, steel metal frames used as the ductwork and uh, you had direct entry into the uh, condition space through the roof duct work which you can see there in black which is actually coated with uh, black asphalt um, which is probably one of the worst things they could have done um, but uh, that's what they did as you can see here the duct work was coated with the asphalt roof coating cement that's typical you can usually get from your local hardware store uh, it's very cheap uh, product. Unfortunately, when you put it on a piece of ductwork um, that supplies cold air to the building, uh, in the summertime, the surface temperature of that black asphalt is approximately anywhere from 150 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit in the full sun. And even um, if it's only an 80 degree day, your, your surface temperatures in the full sun are still going to be around 140 degree. Uh, in temperature Fahrenheit so uh, the black coating uh, not only uh, not only is it not very cost-effective in terms of uh, insulation or in terms of radiant heat transfer uh, especially in a place where you don't want it which is which is the point where the cold air en enters the building but the um, asphalt uh, also is a maintenance issue it's very difficult to maintain once you put it on there are very few things which will uh, seal or stick to it, especially when it's aged and in the condition that it is here where you can actually see um, moss and lichens growing on the side of that uh, particular uh, location. Another issue that comes up pretty often is the, uh, as you can see there, the drainage of the HVAC units. Um, the drain pipe should always be connected to a roof drain or connected to a pipe which takes the water directly off the roof and down to the ground level and preferably onto soil. The water coming out of all uh, any HVAC unit is what's called deionized water. Deionized water um, basically wants to steal uh, an ion from any any positively charged surface and since everything you know has a positive charged surface it, it basically degrades it very quickly um, and so that's one of the things that you want to look for in terms of maintenance and in terms of making sure that you keep that up obviously here we're looking at the sides of the parapet wall um, there's a sheet that was laid up um, probably a layer or two of just raw uh, asphalt paper when it was installed uh, a couple layers actually as you can see here it's just got holes everywhere um, I mean, this there was probably 200 holes, uh, about the size of anywhere from your fist uh, to the size of a dime or a quarter, all the way around the parapet wall. So we know that water was getting in there every time that it leaked, um, especially in a torrential downpour. Um, it was just cracked, and, and as you can see, you can see the holes in here that were just that, that were just all over the place. Um, the uh, the HVAC units, most of them, uh, about half of them were staying and the other half were going. Uh, you can see here that we, we do a little detail, um, um, take a look at all the drains. Um, we measure the uh, coping caps, get an idea of what we're going to need in terms of cover tape in order to seal all that up. And uh, we take a look at uh, various different things to make sure that we're going to be able to to renovate the roof the way that we need to and make sure that our coatings are going to stick properly. One of the reasons why the built up roofing otherwise known as the BUR roof is so expensive is because the rocks, uh, the gravel needs to be removed and the roof deck uh, and the asphalt area is pressure washed and this actually, this roof in particular, filled up an entire 16 cubic yard container once all the rocks and gravel have been removed from the roof, we move on to the pressure washing and turbo blasting of the roof, uh, which will usually yield us a surface which is going to be clean and dry, free of all dust and debris, which might interfere with the successive coating of the spray polyurethane foam. 
In addition, we also uh, want to make sure that any excess oily areas and also any repair areas that are needed can be addressed. Uh, and us usually once we per turbo pressure wash with 5500 PSI the surface that we're going to have is either going to be completely embedded rock or the actual tar or asphalt surface that we're dealing with. Once all the gravel is removed the next stage is to check the temperature of the roof to make sure that it is warm enough for the spray polyurethane foam to be applied and we actually do this throughout the process in order to make sure that we adhere to the minimum manufacturer's requirements. Otherwise the foam will uh, have major issues and typically you're going to see these uh, on other types of roofs. Another area that we pay a lot of attention to is the roof drains. Prior to the installation of the spray polyurethane foam we make sure that all of the roof drains have retrofit covers installed on top of them. The covers are completely covered with tape. This is to ensure that no foam actually goes into the drain and it makes sure that no foam interferes with the proper operation of the grill which keeps all of the debris out of the drain and this ensures that uh, we basically have a waterproof surface all the way from the polyurethane foam all the way into the drain without actually interfering with the operation. Once the foam has been sprayed we can cut away the excess foam leaving the clean relatively clean surfaces that we can reattach all of our grills to. We bevel the spray polyurethane foam and we also apply multiple coats of primer and other quick dry materials in order to make sure that we've got a great seal in between the polyurethane foam and the metal. One of the great things about the spray polyurethane foam that we install with the Aztec system is that it's a closed cell foam system which means that as soon as it's installed, um, as soon as it cures, which is typically an hour or two after uh, you spray it, um, you're, you're basically waterproof. Uh, as you can see, this is the day after the spray foam was installed and uh, we had to vacuum up quite a bit of water. Although we did encounter quite a bit of water from the overnight occasional rainstorm, uh, there once again was absolutely no leaks which occurred during the installation or, or after the installation due to a failure of the foam or the Aztec. The ability of the foam to seal all kinds of penetrations including around the exhaust vents, pipe penetrations and other areas is a, is a key plus and uh, also of course the energy efficiency of the foam. The total R value recorded was approximately R49 the next step in the process after the spray polyurethane foam is applied is to apply our base coat 2000 coats over the spray polyurethane foam and here you can see uh, actually I believe this is our third coat the specification calls for two coats uh, but because this was uh, Old Point Bank uh, and a, a very kind of a whole pro high profile job over on Laskin Road. We wanted to make sure that uh, we, we definitely weren't going to have any issues with this roof. So we applied one extra coat to the entire roof, uh, approximately an extra 7,000 square feet of coating. And you can really tell the difference when you uh, look at the color that it was before and you look at this deep uh, sort of uh, gun battleship gray uh, that the base coat 2000 is tinted with. And you can see that uh, even without the top coat ceramic coating, the base coat alone would be enough to give you waterproof protection. Uh, but the uh, elasticity and, and all of the other qualities of the base coat are not necessarily UV stable. And so the top coat of the ceramic protects the base coat. The base coat gives the elasticity that you need in order to be able to resist punctures. Uh, and uh, hail and that, those kinds of uh, impacts while the ceramic top coat protects the base coat from UV degradation so you really have the best of both worlds um, and uh, especially with the ability to coat and as well as tape and seam any seams that need to be taped and seamed that's one of the drawbacks of the polyurethane foam silicone system is that they really don't have any uh, waterproofing methods other than caulking and spraying foam and if they can't fix it with those two methods then it's not going to get fixed uh, unfortunately whereas with our system we can always revert back to the Aztec 2000 polycloth and or the web seal uh, system 
And so we, we can always guarantee and provide a waterproof um, interface in between any kind of material, um, even if it's a silicone-based material. We have a method for that as well. So there's really no stone unturned. Uh, here we see the, uh, uh, we just walked by there, the, uh, the access door. There's a, a major gas line coming in that we seal in around through the penetration. There, of course, is our roof drain. Um, with the uh, exposed nipples for the screws so that we can securely attach our grill uh, to protect debris from getting in there and also as well service it and, and look at it and see the interface between the polyurethane foam and the Aztec. As we can see with the before and after picture here, the Aztec as well as the polyurethane spray foam goes all the way up the parapet wall, all the way up to where the cap is going to come over. And you can see here some of the asphalt's been sprayed over, which isn't going to hurt it at all. Uh, that's just uh, part of the waterproofing effort that we like to go through in order to make sure that we, we get all of the equipment, not just the roof surfaces, but all the penetration. Once the parapet wall caps are installed, then the system is completely waterproofed. And the ceramic Aztec white coating is applied to all of the... HVAC rooftop equipment. If you recall, all of that, most of that was black and rusted. Uh, so the Aztec ceramic not only is a rust proofer as well, but a waterproofer. And uh, the HVAC units are gonna are gonna run a lot cooler, especially in the summertime, because of the ceramic uh, coating on the HVAC ductwork, and also because they're waterproof uh, and airproof as well. Uh, basically they're hermetically sealed. Basically the entire roof is hermetically sealed and so your energy efficiency values really go up uh, not just the insulation values but the but the air seal values and everything else are just through the roof with with this particular system. It's far more cost effective than a tear off and a replacement. It's environmentally friendly. It's water-based. It's non-toxic. It's the Aztec 2000 system overspray polyurethane foam. So not only is the Aztec system a great system for spray polyurethane foam and all other types of roofing, but while we were on the same job, we actually had a lower roof overhang uh, that was made up of a single ply membrane, uh, and we were able to save that roof from a tear off and replacement and give that a waterproof coating as well. And uh, these are some of the pictures here that you see uh, with some of the numerous damages, gaping holes, cuts, scrapes, penetrations. Um, improper uh, termination bar seals, um, improper equipment, um, improper drains, uh, basically, you know, just the typical stuff that you normally see. The first step uh, in a sing any single ply membrane Aztec installation is to apply a rinsable primer, which is what you see right there. Uh, the rinsable primer uh, stays on the roof for a couple of hours and then we rinse it off. Without that chemical reaction of the rinsable primer, we wouldn't be able to actually install any of the Aztec coatings. And uh, these are actually the finished draw pictures here um, with the uh, finished Aztec Ceramic 900. You could see the tape uh, lines that were installed over all the seams and over all the penetrations. And uh, you have a completely seamless and waterproof system, the Aztec 2000 system for any roof.